Hello Hubots and welcome back. On today's video, we will code a program that tells us the x, y coordinates of our mouse in real time. So if you're not interested in learning how to code it and just want the program, I'll link in the description a video tutorial on how to download it and how to use it. This application may be especially helpful if you're into automation, you know, having the computer basically do stuff on its own. Also, since we're making it, it's a great way to learn Python. This is a beginner's tutorial. I hope you like it. And without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing we need to do is install Python. Python is the programming language that we're going to be using. The installation process for Python is very easy. We just need to go to the Python website and download it from there. The installation process is so easy that I won't guide you into doing it because it's as installing any other programs. However, if you run into any type of problems, please let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can help you. We also need a code editor. You can choose the code editor of your choice. And even if you want, you can also use Notepad. So a code editor helps us write code. And a code editor compared to Notepad has certain features that make writing code easier and that makes reading code easier as well. Some of these features are autocompletion and syntax highlighting. Syntax highlighting is basically coloring functions, integers, strings, and so on, different colors to make reading easier. Personally, I am going to be using Sublime Text. Sublime Text is free, you can download it, it's easy, you just have to go to the Sublime Text website and download it from there. Finally, we also need a terminal. So you can also download a terminal if you want, but I will be using the CMD. If you're running a Mac, then your, yours is called just terminal. Basically, the CMD is going to help us install our modules and it's also going to help us run our code. The next thing we need to do is install our modules. So you might be wondering what is a module? A module is basically a file that contains a set of classes, functions and variables. As you know functions perform a specific task. So importing a module is like importing a bunch of functions that someone or some people already created so we can just use them. This can save us from a few minutes of work to a few years since there are some very complex modules out there. Big thanks to all those people who contribute to making a module. You can also create your own modules by the way, but we will get into that at another time. The first module that we're gonna be looking at is Kenter. Kinter will provide us with the tools that we need to create our GUI. GUI stands for a graphical user interface and basically a GUI is what we see. So for example, here I have the command prompt and as you see the command prompt is a window. So this window is the GUI. Inside the GUI we have two widgets that I can see. The first widget is like a text widget that I can write on and the other widget is this scroll bar that allows me to scroll up and down. So basically Kinter is going to give us the tools to do this and much more. So Kinter already comes installed on your computer. When you install Python, you install Kinter. It already comes with Python. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to check and make sure that Kenter is installed. So to check, we can just do this on the command prompt. In the command prompt, we're going to type the next command. Python hyphen M Kenter. When I run it, this little window pops up. And if it pops up, then it means Kenter is installed on your computer. If it didn't pop up, then sir, it means something is terribly wrong with your computer. 
or well really it just means that it's not installed on your computer so in the unlikely event that it's not installed in your computer we're going to install it to install it we're going to run a pip install so we just type pip install pk and then we wait five minutes later and wait a little bit more five minutes later okay it's installing now so as you can see I get a message that says that the requirement is already satisfied and this is because I already have Kenter installed if you already have it installed and you ran this command then you should get the same message so anyway a lot of people experience an error that says something like pip is not recognized as a command or something like that if that error message appears on your command prompt then sir it means your computer is no good for programming I'm just kidding the solution is actually quite simple I will link a video on the description that will show you how to fix this error if you don't want to to fix it right now there's actually a way to get over this error and I'm gonna show it to you right now so basically all you have to do is type the pi command hyphen and then the Python version that you have in my case it's 3.8 point something but only the 3.8 is necessary then we need hyphen M and then we're gonna run the pip install command in this case pip install kenter when I run it you will notice that okay so I, I did something wrong I wrote kenter and I should have only run I should have only wrote tk so let me do it again pi hyphen 3.8 hyphen m pip install TK. okay now so when I run it you will notice that I get the exact same message that I got when I ran the pip install command so basically both commands do the exact same thing the only difference is that on the first one I just gotta run pip install and the module name and on the second one I also have to run pip install and the module name but before typing it I also need to add this little line right here so the first one is easier to remember the second one is a little bit longer but it does the same so if you, if you want to be lazy please fix the pip error message by doing what I will show you on the other video so now that we know that we have Kenter installed we're gonna move on to the next module the next module is PiperClip. So from PiperClip, we're gonna import a function that is going to allow us to copy information into our clipboard. That's the reason we need it. Now, I think that PiperClip also already comes with Python, but I'm not sure about this. So we're just gonna pip install it to make sure. So we run pip install PiperClip. And as you can see, it has installed, or it would have if I didn't have it. The next module is going to be PyAutoGUI. PyAutoGUI has a function that tells us the exact X, Y mouse position in the screen. So that's what we're gonna be getting from it. So let's pip install PyAutoGUI. And finally, we're going to pip install keyboard. The keyboard the keyboard module has a function that recognizes when certain key is pressed. So we're going to be using that function as well. Finally, I think it's important to mention that the functions that I told you we're going to be using from these modules are not the only ones that it has. Each module has 
many more functions and if you want to know a little bit more about each one you can go ahead and read their documentation and also we're probably going to be using more of these functions in future tutorials hey guys so guess what it's finally time to write some code Yay. okay so i opened my code editor and the first thing i'm gonna do is save this file You can save the file in whatever folder or location that you want. In my case, I'm just going to go to desktop. In desktop, I'm going to create a new folder called Quartz. And inside of this folder, I am going to name my file Quartz.py. As you can see, I added .py at the end of the name. And this is actually important because this way we're telling the system that it is a Python file. There are other ways to do this. However, this is the way that I'm going to be teaching you at this moment. So let's save it. And we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and write the first step. As you can see, I used the hash symbol and when i use it or when we use it in python it means that whatever follows is a comment so it's just there so we can read it and know what's going on but it doesn't actually affect the code in any way as you remember we installed four modules and the order in which we import them is not important so let me just go ahead and import them all So as you can see, I have import Pyro GUI, import keyboard, import Piperclip, and import Kinter. This works fine, this works perfect, and we're going to be able to access the classes, functions, and variables that each module contains. However, when it comes to Kinter, there are certain conventions that we should follow. So let me just show you how to create our window so i'm gonna create a variable here called root and i'm gonna set it equal to kinter dot tk so tk is a class that is inside the kinter module and if we use this method of importing then we have to write the name of the module dot and then the function or class that we want to access right however when it comes to cancer the convention uh, for importing it is like this from cancer import asterisk asterisk means that we want to import everything that is in cancer and when we use this method, then we no longer have to write Kinter dot. So the name of the module is no longer necessary and we can access it like this. So let me just go ahead and write our step two. So like I just mentioned, the variable root contains the main window, the TK class does exactly that it creates our main window as you know we can call a variable whatever we want i can call it i don't know random random letters i can call it cell phone i can call it she broke my heart i can call it whatever i want however we need to make our code clear and easy to read so it's not a good idea to call it something that maybe when we look back at it we'll be like oh my god what is this right so what does it do uh, for that reason let's just name our main window root and actually some people call it win and some people also call it 
master. In our case, let's just call our main window win. So the win variable is equal to the main window. Now, let me save the changes. I'll go to file, save, and I, as you can see, I can just go control S to save. So from here and forth, I'll be using that method. It's very important to save the changes that you make to a file before running it, because if you don't, then uh, the stuff that you changed, that you added, it's not going to run. It's going to run what was there before you saved, right? So let me open my CMD window again, and let's run our code. Before doing so, I want you guys to look over here. This is the directory that the CMD is currently accessing. So as you can see, it's going to users and then to PC. However, my Python file is not there. It's somewhere else. So I'm gonna go ahead and find it. When we have the folder that contains our Python file, we can just click on the bar up here, copy the path, go back to our CMD window, and in it, we can do CV. CV is change directory. So in change, well, after CV, we can just paste the directory where our Python file is, and hit enter. As you can see, the directory has changed now. So we can actually run our code from here. To run it, we're gonna go with the Python command and then we're gonna do the file name. And the file name, as you can remember, is ports.py. So when I run it, nothing happens which is actually great if there was something wrong with this an error message would appear so you might be asking yourself okay it ran correctly so where's the window right the answer for that is actually quite simple we in our code our code is correct our code has no mistakes however the window we created it but we haven't told it to stay there right right to show up so to do that we are going to access a method within our TK class the method I'm speaking of is main loop what main loop is going to do is just keep the window up for us and it is going to keep updating it so if I make any changes to the window like resize it or click a button inside of it or really anything it's going to update it and make the corresponding changes so if i save this code again and if i run my command again let me just copy the command so i don't have to type it every time so if i run it then you guys can see that we have our window here now let's see what changes we can make well, you know what? First, let's explore it. So we have our window. We can resize it, right? We can minimize, maximize, return to normal, and we can exit it. We can close it. So we can really do anything with it. It's just a window like any other window. The difference is that we made it, right? So we should be proud and happy because we're learning this stuff. So. What changes do I want to make to this window? I want to add a title that says mouse coordinates by Hubots. I want the window to have a different size like all the time. Something like this, like this size should work because it's only going to display the coordinates and then a small sentence here saying press F2 to copy the coordinates, right? And also I want it to have a black background. So yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to do or to have. So let's do it. I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna go back to my code. 
The first thing we're going to do is, um, let's see, add a title. So to add a title, I am going to access the title method within our win variable. So I'm going to, inside the parentheses of the title method, we're going to type the title that we want. In my case, it's going to be mouse coordinates by QBox. I'm going to separate this and I think that's good. I think that's great. The next thing I want to do is give it like a specific size and I will do that through the geometry method. So inside the geometry method we're also going to write a string containing the width times the height. So as you know, the width is from one side to the other and the height is from top to bottom, right? And we separate the width and the height by a lowercase x. It's important to do this, otherwise it's not going to work and it has to be lowercase. So the width is, well, for our window, let's do something like 350 and the height, let's do something like 150. I'm going to save the changes, but it's not yet time to run our code. So the last thing I mentioned was that I wanted a black background and we're going to make that change through the config method. Using this method, we can do a lot of changes to the window and let's just go through those changes throughout the video, okay? So in here, I want to set a background color. I can do that by typing BG and setting it equal to the color that I want. In this case, I want it black. So I'm going to save it and then I'm going to run it. So as you can see, the window pops up with uh, like a different size. I think that's good. It has the title that I wanted and it has a black background color. Something interesting that we can do is that instead of typing the actual name of the color, like black, if we want kind of like a different shade of black or of any color really, we can run the hex code. So to get the hex code, let's go to Google, type hex colors, and this one works for me. Let's open it up. And over here, we have like this black square. I'm gonna type it and I'm gonna go with the shade of black that I want. I think this one is good. Let's do shoes. Let's copy the code, the hex code. Let's go back to our code and inside the, the string we're gonna use the hash symbol and then the hex code. So let's save it. Let's open the CMD again. Let me copy the command to run it and let's run it. So as you can see, the shade of black is now a little bit different, which is what I wanted. So I think that's it for step number one. We created the window and it looks like we wanted it to look. So the next thing we need to do, guys, is that we want the GUI to display the X, Y coordinates of the mouse, right? So in order for us to be able to do that, we need a label. A label widget so inside this widget we can write text and display it to people so let's see how that's done label just like TK is a class and we're gonna store this class in a variable so that we can access it and modify it later on um, this label it's going to be called quartz underscore label and I'm gonna set it equal to the label class now on the parentheses, the first thing we need to do is type in where is it that we want the label to appear. We only have one window and we want it on that window, right? 
So we can also access a text parameter and using a string we can type in what is it that we want the label to show. In our case we wanted to display the x, y coordinates. Now if I run the code as it is right now the label is still not going to show up because we need to specify exactly where is it that we want it to show. Now to do that I'm going to run the course label and I am going to access a method called pack. There's another method called grid and basically when we use grid we can specify the row and column of where is it that we want the label to appear. So as you may guess using grid uh, gives us the ability to set it up exactly where we want it to show up. However, we're not going to be using grid at this time, we're going to be using pack. So what pack does is that it puts the label, or any widget for that matter, in the first available spot. Normally it's the first centered available spot, so it's probably going to put it like on the, on the top and right in the middle of the window. So this should work. Let's save and let's go to our CMD and I'm gonna run the code python quartz.py let me save it again just in case I don't have it saved and run it so as you can see we get the, mount, the window to open and we have our label like right there however we see a lot of flaws for example the background is different from the GUI's background the letters are small and they're black, I want them to be white. So let's fix that. Coming back to our code, the way to fix them is by accessing the config method of our label. So what is it that we want to change? First, I want to change the background and I'm going to set it equal to the hex color that we used for the main window. Also, I want to set a foreground, which is the, the color of the letters, and I'm going to make it white, because if they're black, it's going to be really hard to dis distinguish the background from the color of the letters, right? And finally, I want a font. So we can set a font by creating a tuple. Now, the tuple is going to have two parameters. The first one is going to be the name of the font that we want. In my case, I want Fida code. And next, I want to set a size for this font. And I'll be doing, I don't know, let's say 40 and see what happens. So let's save the changes. Let's go to the CMD and run the code again. Okay, so I don't know what I did. So I'll just Okay, so what happened is that, that I ran the I ran a command that I was not supposed to run. Yeah, check it out. So I'm running. I have no idea what I'm running, but it's not what I'm supposed to be running. So I'll do Python again. Quartz.py and I'm gonna copy it again and run it. So as you can see the window now displays what we wanted it to display not the exact coordinates yet but we're just making sure that we can see some text in there right so one of the things is that uh, the window is like a little bit small for what we want it to show but honestly when it's actually working we're gonna have at most 10 characters which is at most four numbers for the X position and four numbers for the Y position depending on our screen resolution. So unless you have like a huge screen resolution like, I don't know, 10,000 or 100,000 on each side, this should be good. However, we want our GUI to look good. So I'm just going to erase the coordinates, well the word coordinates to make it shorter. So save and run. So we have XY there. 
I think the size is good, but I think we can make it a little bit bigger. Let's see, 45. Save. And run. Well, okay, that's fine. So let me close the GUI. And I think this is it for step number three. Let me comment that in here. Step number three was display, displaying the coordinates. Now what I want or what we want in step number four is to display the instructions. Now the instruction, well, it's actually, it's actually instruction because it's just one sentence, right? So the idea for the instruction is basically the same as, as this one. So I'm just going to copy the code and paste it down here. But instead of chords, I'm going to call it instruction label. So let's check and make sure everything is all right. So it's going to appear in the main window. Let's find out the text. We need to change the text. And it's going to read something like press F2 to copy the coordinates. And then it's going to have the background color that we are using, which is good white letters perfect the font okay instead of beta code let's do something like calibri you can just play around with the font and check if the font that you like is in there oh okay and the the size we need to make this a lot smaller right so i'm gonna make it 12 and i'm just gonna pack it so yeah what's gonna happen here is that it's going to put uh, the instruction label just underneath the coordinates label. So if I were to, to cut this and paste it up here, then it will be the other way around. First, it will display the instruction and then it will display the X, Y coordinates just because of how we wrote the code it's linear so it's first going to do this and then it's going to do this right so anyway let's save and let's run okay so i copied the code and that's what it's running so copy and run okay so it seems i can't copy correctly let me try it again copy and run okay so as you can see we have press f2 to copy the coordinates which is what we wanted so we're almost done the last thing to do is i think the most important one the essence of this program actually so let's do it we want the coordinates of the mouse to be displayed in real time right so what we need to do is um, we need to create a while loop. The reason we're doing a while loop is because, as you may remember, if we run while true, that means that the code is always going to run unless we tell it not to, right? So it's always going to run, it's always going to be updating where the mouse is, and it's always going to be giving us the new coordinates. So how are we going to get the mouse coordinates? Well. As you know, we have a, an X position and we have a Y position. And we're gonna set these two variables equal to a function from PyAutoGUI. So PyAutoGUI has a function called position. And this function is going to return two values, which are the X and the Y coordinates. For that reason is that we're able to use this syntax. This is going to give us two values, so I can create two variables, and each variable is going to obtain one of these values. Now that we have the X and Y coordinates, what we want to do is display them on our label. Now to do that, 
we're gonna access the label again and we're gonna do it by calling the quartz.label variable and accessing the config method now since the only thing we need to change is the text we're just gonna do text and set it equal to pos x plus pos y now there is this thing called concatenation so basically concatenation is just sticking text together however if we run the plus operator on these two values it's possible that it is going to add up to numbers right because I think that the position function gives us two numbers maybe they're points but well I think they're they're numbers they're integers so just in case and just to make sure we're gonna convert them to strings So now there's strings. I think I need one more of those things. So I'm gonna save this and before I run it actually, um, if I run it like this, it's going the, the code is going to be trapped in this while loop. Uh, if, if I want the configuration to occur, I need the loop to end. But I don't want it to end because if it does, then it's not going to give me the coordinates in real time. So I need to let the GUI know that it needs to update the text. And I do that by accessing the win, the main window, and running the update method in it. So this little line right here is going to keep updating the text to the current x and y position of the mouse. So now let's save it. Let's go to the CMD and let's run the code. Okay, so as you can see, it works, right? It's working and it's getting the coordinates. However, because of how the coordinates are being displayed, it looks like one big number. And here it looks like a 651,833. So it's probably 6, 651 on the X side and 833 on the Y side. So let's fix that. Let's make them separate so it looks nice and clean. So I'm gonna close the GUI. I'm gonna come back to my code. And the only thing I need to do is add a comma and a space between the coordinates, right? So to do that, I'm going to create a string, I'm going to add the comma and the space that I need, and I'm going to add it. So basically what's going on here is that I'm, uh, I'm like writing the X position of the mouse, and then I'm putting a comma right after it, and leaving this space, and then I'm adding the Y position. So I think this should work. Let's find out. Save and run. So yeah, as you can see, it's nice and clean now. And when I move my mouse, it updates the position in real time. Now, let's see what else we can do. okay so what we need to do now is have the function that if i press f2 the current coordinates are going to be copied into my clipboard so i can paste them wherever i want right the logic to doing this is quite simple we're gonna use a conditional so if and then i'm going to access the keyboard module within the keyboard module there is an is press the function and the, the parameter for the is press function is the key that we are trying to detect so if the if the f2 key is pressed then and now we're going to access our piperclip module the piperclip module has a copy function and inside the parentheses is what it's going to be copied so I want to copy these values, so I'm just going to select them 
and I'm going to paste them in there. So again, the logic is if I press the F2 key, then the current X and Y position are going to be copied into my clipboard. And this is it. I think this should work. So let's save it and let's run it. Okay, so I copied something else, so I need to recopy the command. Okay, so it works just like it did before, but now it should be able to copy the coordinates as I press F2. So let me go up to the 0, 0 side. I'm going to press F2 and I am going to paste the result and yes, it it copy the 00, zero coordinates. Now one of the cool features that this program is going to have is that I can have it like minimized or just not on the front and it's still going to be working. Check it out. So I'm gonna put my cursor over here. I'm gonna press F2 and then I'm gonna paste the coordinates. Let's do it again. Let's go to the to the bottom right side, which is like the highest X and highest white right side. Something to note here is that my screen resolution is 1920 by 1080. The reason it's taking one pixel away is because when we start counting from the zero zero side, which is the top left side of our screen it starts counting from well zero zero it doesn't count from one one so that's the reason that in the end we have one pixel less on each position right so yeah I think we made it we have a fully functional program and maybe something that will be good to mention is that normally when we have a grid we start from like from here and then we when we want to increment on the y side we go up right and if we want to increment on the x side we go to the right however when we're speaking about screen resolution pixels and that kind of stuff the zero zero side is the top left so it starts from here and if you want to increment on the white side you need to go down and if you want to increment on the x side you need to go to the side i hope you enjoyed the video so did you learn anything if yes prove it create your own gui in which you display the traditional phrase hello world if the user presses a certain key, let me know how it turned out. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys next time, and for now, Hubots is finished running.